couple of weeks ago, I was walking down the path through the wetland that's on the way to work, and then I suddenly heard a woman yelling. I looked over and saw a lady, maybe in her mid-thirties, who was screaming out, Thomas! 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 I thought, oh gosh, she's lost her son. He might have fallen in the water. I raced over to help and asked where she last saw him. She then said, oh, it's okay, it's okay, he'll come out soon. I replied, you mean Thomas is not a boy? No, 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 he's my little Jack Russell. Oh, okay, I thought he was your child. A few moments later, a wet, muddy terrier came running out from the undergrowth. The weather was quite cold, so he was wearing a navy blue tartan dog coat. She called out to him, There you are, you silly duffer. You gotta stop running away like that. My first thought was, who gives a dog a person's name? When I was a kid, dogs had names like Spot and Benji, Ginger and Socks. It'd be hard to mistake those for people's names. Just a couple of days ago, I was walking to work again through the nearby forest, and there was an elderly lady walking with her Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. I had to look that name up, by the way. The dog had a pretty pink bow in its hair, so obviously it was female. I see this lady and her dog at least two or three times a week, walking through the same section of parkland, but I had never heard the dog's name before until a couple of days ago. The lady called out, Genevieve! Genevieve! Come here, girl! Oh, come on. Genevieve? Really? Clearly people have begun to humanise their pets. They dress them up in bows and coats and give them human names. They take them to special pet salons and spend up to $100 on getting them professionally groomed, styled and perfumed. Of course, there are also the pet owners who think their animals can't do any wrong. I guess, most pet owners. Whenever a dog comes racing up to me and starts sniffing my leg, the owner usually calls out and says something like, Don't worry, he's harmless. He wouldn't hurt a fly. He might lick you to death, though. It's always the same spiel. Everyone's dog is harmless, until they're not. One time when we were living in Brisbane, I would take my two-year-old son down to the local park. The park had lots of signs up stating, This is not an off-leash park. Owners will be penalised. However, this didn't stop the locals from releasing their hounds every afternoon. Dogs would be running about all over the place. All of them would of course say things like, Don't worry, Cooper loves children. Or, Bella just wants to have a sniff. She doesn't bite. Anyway, my boy was running around and then a ball flew straight past him. So of course, he starts to bumble after the ball. A dog then came hurtling in and smashed straight into my son. He flew maybe a metre and a half. Of course he was crying, but luckily uninjured. The owner came racing in and saw that my son was okay, and then started joking. Haha, <laughs> sometimes Max gets a bit carried away. Don't worry though, he's a complete softy. We didn't get an apology. The owner didn't put Max back on his leash. They just continued playing ball as if nothing had happened. Another time, the same park. A dog came racing up to my son and started sniffing him. He started to get a bit scared and turned to run. The owner of course shouted out, Don't worry, she loves children. At that point, my son kind of backhanded the dog as he was trying to get away, and then the dog bit him on the finger. Luckily, not seriously. The owner saw this, but instead of apologising and disciplining her dog, she said, Your son shouldn't have stuck his hand in her face. Of course she'll bite. Anyway, we got into a bit of an argument, but I ended up walking away. The lady couldn't admit any wrongdoing. First of all, it's not an off-leash park. There were signs posted everywhere. But every owner seemed to flagrantly flout the rules. Secondly, dogs aren't people and don't obey human customs such as looking out for toddlers when they're running, or not sniffing little children's crotches. Thirdly, a child doesn't know not to react to a pestering dog. How can owners possibly expect all children to know how to deal with their wandering mutts? That afternoon, I sent an email to the local council and explained what had happened. They ended up ringing me and agreed that things like that shouldn't happen. They promised to send out more patrols to the region in the future, but admitted that it would be unlikely to be more than once a week due to a limited number of staff. So of course, the locals would still come down to the park every afternoon and let their dogs race around the field. In the end, we just avoided the open areas of the park and would stick to the small playgrounds instead. In the past, I've worked with people who love their dogs or cats so much that they have pictures of them on their desk at work. Half their conversation would involve something to do with their pets. During their lunch break, they would scan eBay and the like for new toys and clothes for their animals. Personally, I find it all very ridiculous. I understand that many of these people are lonely, so a pet is a great form of companionship for them. I know there have been studies done that show that there are lots of benefits to be had when being a pet owner. Things like reduced anxiety levels, lower blood pressure, improved immunity, it helps people socialise, it helps children develop, etc. But quite frankly, and this is probably rather contentious, I think animals should not be pets. Sticking a bird in a tiny cage is wrong. If the bird can't fly, that's torturous to the bird. 
I saw some songbirds in China who were kept in tiny cages. The owners would keep them near the kitchen window so they could hear their lovely song every morning. That's disgraceful in my opinion. Surely the natural sounds of the birds in the environment would be far more pleasing than caged ones. But unfortunately, many of the animals in China have lost a lot of their natural habitat due to the ever-growing human population. I've read stories of puppy farms where dogs are treated as nothing more than breeding machines, used to produce puppies for profit. This happens in Australia too. I've posted the RSPCA link below. Dogs are often kept in overcrowded and filthy environments. Breeding animals may be confined permanently in small cages, never being allowed out for a walk, to play, or express normal behaviours. Unless you actually visit the breeder where you buy your dog, there is no way you would know whether or not your new puppy is coming from one of these terrible farms. There is also the issue of pedigree dogs. Here's a section from the RSPCA's Love is Blind campaign. Many breeds of dog have exaggerated physical features, which means they can't breathe, walk or give birth normally. Many have chronic and painful ear, skin and eye problems. These problems prevent many dogs from having a normal and comfortable life. This results from breeding to pedigree breed standards that focus on appearance rather than selecting traits that are best for the dog's health and well-being. A much touted myth is the one where fish only have a 3 or 4 second memory. This was often used to justify keeping a fish in a tiny bowl. But it has since been shown that fish have a much better memory than previously thought. Scientists now believe they can remember for up to 5 months. Even the TV show Mythbusters debunked this myth. Even the whole idea of desexing I find detestable. What right do humans have of chopping off a dog's testicles? If we did that to another human being, we would certainly be jailed, and rightfully so. In summary, I think animals are great. But they shouldn't be pets. I find nothing nicer than walking through a forest and hearing the natural calls of birds and the like. I enjoy looking at the fruit bats roosting in the trees above, but I can't agree that sticking a bird in a cage is a good thing. I can't agree that desexing a dog, putting a bow in its hair, and covering it in perfume is nothing less than absurd. I'm sure many listeners will disagree and say that as long as an animal is treated well, then it's not an issue. I know, I'm in the minority. Pet ownership in Australia is high. Anyway, I'm not going to keep a pet, not because I don't like animals, but because I think the very notion of taking an animal away from its natural environment is wrong. I'll stick to my walks in the forest, thank you very much.